<laughs> as much as I love the Xbox 360, there are some games that I have discovered I truly just cannot stand these games. Uh, they, you, they, there's certain games that just make you angry. Yeah, like, I, I've been there. I have one for you too. Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna lead this, ride, ride this horse into the battle. <laughs> I'm, I got one for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Well, we, we, we're gonna talk about it. But I, I first, yeah. Let, so roll the theme song. Riff and Mort. Riff and Mort and Riff and Mort. Riff and Mort and Riff and Mort. Talking about stuff that they got. Out on the hunt, games and toys that you want to know. It's the Riff and Morty Show. Riff and Morty. Let's define a bad game first because you and I might have different definitions. How would you define a bad game? Are we defining bad games or games that we hate? Games that you can't stand. Games that hate I can't stand whatever. would be a game that I... I feel like I have to have some sort of attachment going into it. Like, hey, I would, I, I'm probably gonna like this game because yeah. I like X, Y, Z. Yes. For me, if it's just a bad game or a game I hate out of the blue, yeah, I feel like it's not really justified. But if it's something I was thought that I would enjoy, yeah, then ended up not liking or frustratingly hard, yeah, that's where I hate can come in. What about you? So. I, I think when the game is just terrible, Superman 64. Got it, terrible, know, just beyond playability almost. Yeah, it's when it's aggressively mediocre. Yes. Like where it's just, you can I tell like that, that maybe there is a good idea somewhere, but it gets squandered. Aggressively mediocre. It, because it's like, it's not good enough to want to keep playing. It's not bad enough to just trash, but it's just like, why? what am I doing with my time right now? So here are some of the games that I, hate on the Xbox 360. I've not seen such bravery. A lot of times we see games that are sort of the uncommon games. Got it. And we're not sure why they're uncommon. Well, there's good reason. One of those games is the first Templar. This is, <laughs> I guess this. so I, I don't know. It's an early release game, I think. It's a co-op game where you go through and play like through this like almost like it's like an Assassin's Creed rip off, oh, but it. not but not at all. But it's just so it's it's not interesting. It's not fun. I played 20 minutes of it and was like, all right, like I, what what am I doing with my life? Well, right what to, what's told I've never played this, but what told me it's bad already is you know normally when you look on the back of a game, it's yeah. like it's like winner of this or this game has this. Yeah. This one has one quote from official Xbox magazine. It says, this game has our attention. <laughs> Like that's it. it. It's got our attention. We don't know why. But they didn't go on to tell us what about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it has my attention too for being a game that I cannot stand. <laughs> I've not seen such bravery. Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. Uncharted. Mm. Brilliant storytelling, amazing yeah. games. By the way, how do you feel about the PlayStation? He doesn't like PlayStation. Uh, have you played through Uncharted before? Not I even? have I have played through two of the Uncharted games. Okay, I think Uncharted 2 is a masterpiece. I think it's storytelling, it's it's perfect for me. We're getting a new Indiana Jones game, by the way. Oh, that'll that's right, we are. Can't wait to play it. The Indiana Jones movies, the first one is it's a literally a perfect movie. Uh, so a lot of people that are influenced by these have gone in to make their own versions of them. Oh yeah. One such game is Deadfall Adventures. Oh, this is a bad game. It's it's everything about the production and presentation mm. is rough. So can you tell that it's trying to be Cl like clearly oh, okay. that, like just go watch five minutes of gameplay video. The main character looks like a cross between Harrison Ford and Nathan Drake. And oh, they're trying. OK. And like there's this there's a supernatural theme to it. It It is a terrible playing game. The gunplay feels off, you know, like in shooting games, if the gunplay is tight, even if the gameplay isn't that fun, yes. if the gunplay is tight, it, it's still, you can get through it. A level of fun through, ish, right. through gaming, yeah. And the other thing that kills me is the audio mixing is so bad. You oh. can barely hear the characters talk. The voice acting is really, like, subpar. That's brutal. Like, I don't, I don't want to trash these people's efforts in making these games. Of I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what the circumstances were. Maybe their hearts were in it. Totally. But the way that it translated across to me, it was such a rough game to play. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that they can realize a better vision yeah. for this kind of a game in the future. Yeah. But it just, the way that this one lands, it just lands with a thud. And, it, let's, and let's make that clear, like you said, this isn't us. I mean, obviously, yeah. there's criticisms of all stuff in the world. I watch right. another channel called Corridor Crew, where they talk through movies that are bad and critique it. It's not necessary to say that, like, you guys are a waste of developers. No, no, it's no. The, the the skill isn't honed in for what the game is. The right. presentation we got. I really didn't like it. That's okay. Is that where we start? Sure. 
I've not seen such bravery. The next one is one that I'm gonna pick that I was very excited for uh, in my youth, and that was on the Xbox 360, of course, called Tony Hawk. <gasps> a new Tony Hawk what? ride. Uh. Which in presentation of what it was sounded yeah. great. Hey, I'm a skateboarder. I actually love the game Skate that's on the arcades where you hold onto the side rails. The first time I saw the advertisement for that game, I th I thought exactly of the, the of the Sega Skate game. That's where you hold the rails. Which is fun. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's just like a slalom racer. It's you totally arcadey, and yeah. I was like, hey, maybe this will be right. this version of this. But when the game came out, you quickly found yourself, especially if you're like me, like an, a, a skateboarder, being like, all right, I'm on a board. Kick yeah. flip time. Let me at least get some of that motion. But without the side rails, even though you think like that would be cheating or whatever. Yeah. But when you're on this little awkward, basically just a deck on the floor, and you go into your tail slides, your nose slides, yeah. your crooked grinds, it just felt so wonky. It felt so dumb. And most everything you would do wouldn't register for actually what you wanted to do anyway. Yeah. If you're like, hey, let me do a tray flip, crooked grind, nolly shove out. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. Right, which is kind of like such an easy trick to do. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> No, but all in all, I think like this goes back to what I said in the beginning. The reason I hated it yeah. is because I had such high hopes for it. I know when you look at it, it's I, I want them to make a good version of that game like, with a great peripheral. I hope that it can come to life. But I think because it was such a commercial you know bomb that I don't think it'll ever happen. You know what I think? Hmm. I think the best way to make that game is some of those VR games they have. They have the the, the yes, rectangle, the, yes. the, the octagon that goes around you, and you can kind of. Yeah. And if you could hold on to that in all areas and That'd then awesome. play with the board locked in on like a swivel, yeah, that would be the way to do it. Because with the Tony Hawk ride, you do a kickflip and it just shoots across yeah. the living room. Yeah. I have to appreciate the developer's ambition for trying totally, something. Totally, totally. So interesting, but it just the way the final product just didn't work. It didn't. It, it bummed me out. Yeah. Hate. I've not seen such bravery. Okay, so this is Looney Tunes Acme Arsenal. Play this. Who loves Looney Tunes? I mean, it's a it's it is the cartoon classic. These are characters that we love. Some of the defining cartoon characters of all time. By the way, best Looney Tunes game ever, Looney Tunes Space Race. There's a Dreamcast and a PS2. We version. played it. It is such a fun Very game. Very fun game, yeah. This game is not. This is Looney Tunes Acme Arsenal. What's so frustrating is, again, you want to love the game. It's a, it's like a third person kind of beat em up style game. It's, it, they've got this great license and it just feels like it gets squandered. Like there's, there's nothing that sort of is charming about it. There's nothing that's yeah. interesting about it. You, I mean, by the artwork and everything on it, it looks like it oh, looks this, like it's gonna be a fun time. Yeah, get your friends, play some co-op. It's not. It's it's a it's beat 'em up mechanics. Yep. 3D sort of space, so, so it's not like left to right, like you know, uh, Final Fight or something. But it just it just is it it bums me out to yeah. play the game because it makes me just not like any of it. It's sort of like let's make them say a catchphrase at this point, or let's yeah. make them da da da. And um, it's a kind of an expensive game. It's like really? a twenty or thirty dollar game. Okay. And so, uh, if you see it for cheap, give it a shot. Yeah. But for me, it's just a game that made me just frustrated and want to go play Looney Tunes Space Race. <gasps> the best time ever! Not so much. At least I'm here. I'm a good time. Yeah, he's a good guy. I said a good time. I'm not a good guy. Whatever. I've not seen such bravery. Rip it apart. The Simpsons. What? I love this. Don't go there. I'm not going there on 360, especially not 360. Okay. The 360 game is great. Okay. Uh, King of the Hill. Uh, even, you know, there's a lot of these animated shows that the writing is so good and so interesting. And then there's shows like Family Guy where it's just one note. I can't stand that show. I don't think it's funny. I think it, uh, you're gonna get hate. I fine. What we can hey here's a th I like what John Hancock says. This is my list. We can disagree and still be friends. It's cool, man. Hey, who knew? Who knew you could do that? Who knew? Have different critical opinions and still hold each other's dignity high. Who knew who, this? What? Yeah. So I don't like Family Guy. I don't yeah. find it interesting. I don't find it funny. I don't think the writing's good. Me neither. Okay, good. <laughs> I just didn't want to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the video game version of that for me is Fairy Tale Fights. This is a beat 'em up game where the joke is supposed to be that you're Little Red Riding Hood or Snow White okay. or the Emperor with no clothes and it sort of revels in being an overly over the top gory sort of beat em up oh, game. Oh, okay. The joke is like, isn't it funny how the fairy tale people are all sadistic? Bruh. It's not. Got it. And it doesn't play good. And it's not fun. And got so it. it got trashed when it came out. Okay. I think that maybe there's a humorous idea in sort of 
you know, characters going against type. I think that can be really funny, but the way that they execute it is just, it doesn't work for me at all. Okay. And so it's a game that, you know, again, sort of that aggressively mediocre, the menu systems are confusing, the sort of layout of it was confusing. And then when you start playing it, it's just like, it just doesn't, f I Got don't, I, f I feel bad playing it. It just didn't, wow. didn't okay. work for me. Yeah. Okay. So fairy so buy it. <laughs> fairy tale fights I don't recommend, sorry. Never even heard of it. After the Interrupting this video for a sponsorship. It's not a sponsorship. Let me be real with you guys. Every time we get emails and people are like, hey, can you review our product and do it this way and this way? We say no, we'll talk about it casually. That's just how we are. That's the flow of our show. This company sent us a microphone wireless, which I'm actually curious to try out. Let me know what you guys think. Ready? Here's the test. You, you guys can really see how prepared I really am for this. I told you guys, we don't do sponsorships. We don't promise anything. We just check things out as they come if we think they're cool. This company, don't even know how to say their name, but it's the WM720 wireless mic setup. I was intrigued because I always use shotgun mic, shotgun microphones in my video, put this on top of the camera or on a tripod like this. But I'm curious how the wirelessness sounds. How does it sound to you guys so far? I don't know what it sounds like according to you guys. I'll unplug it later and we'll do a test to see what it sounds like without a mic and then with a mic. So check one, two, check one, three, three, four, five, five, six, seven. It's right here. The lapel is right here where it's supposed to be. If I talk high, will it crack? Hey, I mean, most microphones will if you do that. So I'm being kind of silly by doing that. But I want to do a distance test because that's the next thing I want to do. This thing's pretty cool. To be honest, came with a lot of stuff. Came with stuff to hook up to your phone, to different versions of this, to different speaker setups and all that. I was pretty impressed. So now is the distance tense. Distance test. Distance learning? No, I'm tired of that crap. So luckily I have a very large backyard. I'm going to talk at normal volume. I'm sure I'll be in and out of focus. But I will say, honestly, I'm already pretty excited for this product if it works well from what you guys are hearing because um, I don't get stuff like this very often, like microphone type stuff or, or gear setup. It's normally gaming type stuff. So let's see if you guys can hear me. My backyard is, by the way, about 100 feet. So it's a pretty large backyard. I know that because I work in the electrical business and I know the service wire is 100 feet long because I had to measure it myself not too long ago. I almost stepped in dog poop. So thank you to the company, by the way, I will leave a link in the description down below. Can you guys still hear me? I doubt it, I bet it's crackling by now, but if it's not, that's awesome. Or it's deadly crackling and you can't hear a thing and I'm just talking nonsense. All right, I'm at the back of my wall. Back of my wall, chilling. Can you hear me? I don't know. I would guess not, but maybe you can because the camera's about 100 feet away right now. Hi dog. Okay. Let's check it. Okay, and just so we can do like a little bit different type of test. Wow, hey look, that worked out. You can actually see me. Hello. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to unplug this device while I'm recording so you guys can hear what it sounds like with and without it while it's talking. Uh-oh. Nope, am I gonna sneeze? I don't know. It's coming, slowly. I never sneeze like that. That was like the weirdest noise ever. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna talk at a normal volume so that everything makes sense as I talk. Hello, we are here in my game room. I am now getting closer to the microphone where I'm going to unplug it. As I'm unplugging it, you should hear a difference in recording. The audio right now should sound different. In my opinion, it probably sounds worse now. It probably sounds way more echoey, way more hollow. At least I won't know any of this until the video is over. So I'll have to record a little bit with my phone after to tell you guys what I thought in the end after all of this. Okay, I'm not using the microphone now, but I just watched the video of me using the mic. I am very, very, very impressed. What I'm seeing online is this thing is between 50 to 100 bucks. Totally worth it. Literally, as I was watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I like the way it sounds better than my Rode mic back there and my blue Yeti microphone right there. And I'm not joking, I'm not, this company, I probably won't even tell them that I'm uploading this video, so I'm not getting anything from there or anything out of them. I am blown away by its simplicity. You guys, yes, of course, you can change the frequency and where it's gonna connect and the, the loudness and the volume and all that, but guys, that was all 100% plug and play. I did no research, no nothing. We are here in my game room. I am now getting closer to the microphone where I'm going to unplug it. Plugged it in to my camera, plugged it in, 
to my device, to my side. You just clip it to your side, that earpiece type. Absolutely blown away for the price. Honestly, probably gonna be using this mic way more often now. Thank you so much to this company. Uh, sorry in the beginning. <laughs> now I feel bad in the beginning. I honestly don't know the name of the company, but I'll link everything down below. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this was awesome. Everything will be down below. Wow. I mean, uh, can, do you guys know what that says? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Very, very, very impressed. Well done. Well done for the price, too. I've not seen such bravery. The going sort of recommendation is if you see an Atlas game, you know, especially at the end of a console's life, pick it up because it's yeah. going to be hard to find later. Yeah. Zoid's Assault was released on the Xbox 360 as a turn-based strategy game based on the Zoid's franchise. This is a game where even if I loved turn-based strategy games, the presentation on this game is so bland and bad. Like, you know, when you watch an opening part of a movie or like even the opening tutorial level can be instructive, but also totally. introducing you into the world. Yeah. It's like flat screens, mm. boring dialogue. The it just it just did everything it could to make me not want to play it. When a game starts out too out of the get go rough, yeah. that's hard because to get someone well, especially in modern times, yeah. to keep someone locked in on something for more yeah. than five minutes without giving you that go, yeah. there's gonna be a quick flick of the turn off switch. Totally, and so, you know, and I, I can appreciate that. Like, some games are a slow burn. Maybe this is a game that if you're a Zoids fan, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, did I, did I cut out too soon? but I couldn't get through more than an hour of the game before I was like, I just don't want to play anymore. If you gave it an hour, then I don't blame you, yeah. to be honest. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that's a reasonable amount of time, but you know, there are games where it's Slow like, no, no, games. when you wait, you know, and the mechanics come together by the second act, all of yeah. a sudden you can't put the controller down. I didn't find the strategy elements that fun, but I did find them playable. So it's a playable game. It's not a bad game. It's well, what, not what you said is an interesting point too, because that's so hard in game development, because mm -hmm. a lot of times we see See these games even retro games you know you watch videos now yeah. looking at the development we didn't know and we're like oh man they were on budget restraints yeah. they were given some crazy atmosphere to where they were like oh change everything and now you have two weeks left to make the game yeah not saying that's what happened with this one yeah you never know you never know how it got to be the you garbage that it is if it is garbage yeah and and hopefully i mean hopefully people who love zoids loved it and maybe there's going to be another thing in the property yeah. that people love there's but... an hd remake coming out for the xbox series x <laughs> i couldn't even get through it keep it straight face. <laughs> <laughs> i've not seen such bravery i have an interesting one i don't know if i would necessarily say i hate it but the build up to the game of what everyone was telling me. I'm gonna get so much hate already. Halo know. 4. No, what? No, so many people were telling me about this game. It's so great, it's so cinematic, it's so this, so that I probably put about five hours into it before I was That's like- That's a long time. Before I was like, I'm done. That's I, at least two movies. A lot of people like it. A lot of people love it. Most people do. LA Noir. Oh. I don't know why. I couldn't get into it either. Okay, the, it, it wasn't like I hated it, but I think I was more upset during it. Uh-huh. Only because everybody was hyping it so much, not yeah. saying it's a bad game. It didn't it seem like it had any flaws technically. Yeah. I just couldn't get into it to where every hour that would go by, I'm like, okay, there's gotta be a reason people are yeah. telling me this. Maybe my stress got to me and was kind of keeping me from enjoying yeah. it. But I wasn't down with the LA Noir hype and everyone was like, it's the bad transition, this kind of vibe yeah. and this and that. And I was like, I'm annoyed. Do you know who uh, Matt McMuscles is? That's my, <laughs> that's my weekend name. <laughs> he, he has a series called What Happened uh, uh, on YouTube, and he goes into different games that have a troubled history, or mm. don't they don't they don't end up coming out as good games, Got or they're major, major flops. He talks about that game. Mm. The development history on LA Noir is really interesting. Oh, because, see, I'd like to see that then. Yeah, it's and you know to that end, creatively, it's it was so ambitious what they were trying mm. to do, what they're trying to accomplish. This whole detective, I get it too. Mystery, yeah. I saw all that in the game. I, it just wasn't for me. I played less than you did. I played a couple hours of Got it. it. I, same thing, I was hyped, I wanted to love it. I, I didn't totally translate to the gameplay mechanics of mm, it and what yeah. you're what you're trying to do, but I love a good story in a game. Me and too. I think that they were trying to tell a good story. Yeah. I, same with you, I, I couldn't keep up with it and I was just kinda like, eh, I'm fine, I'm moving on. You know it's a good story? Uh, the story of a girl, uh, she cried a river and drowned the whole world. With her tears? Yeah, I absolutely loved her when she smiled. Mm. It feels like that's a song. No. I've not seen such bravery. All right, qu a quick three. We've talked about some of the ones that are at the top of our list. So let's talk about a quick other three. Dark is, it feels like Twilight came out and they were like, let's make a cool Xbox 360. It's like Sam, just... Fesh Sam Fisher 
meets uh, what's the what is it? Uh, I just want to know who thought that'd be a good. Hey, let's make it. <laughs> Twilight's awesome. Let's make a cool game about it. Well, I, you know it's like zombies are all the rage. Is like oh god, vampires it, got it, were kind got of the it. rage. Vampires were so hot. So yeah, <laughs> uh, it's this game's just not good. Just pass on it. I I like the the Warriors games, Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, you know the Dragon Quest Warriors. Yes. All those. This is a game that is that same type of game. You go into battle, fight millions of people, but. There's no, I didn't feel weight or impact. Some people mm. love this game, but for me, I, I didn't feel like there was weight or impact to the game where I, I, I was like, I'd rather just play Zelda Hyrule Warriors instead. Do you like the uh, Golden State Warriors? Yeah, I don't know who that is because uh, I don't play sports. <laughs> oh, this one broke my heart. You can tell that the developers were trying to make a meaningful World War II oh, honoring, which you know. I'm all about. Yeah, honoring our, you know, our soldiers or it just, it just doesn't come together. I, I wanted to love this game. I couldn't love this game. I don't know that I hate this game. This that that might be too. I don't. I don't this know. This is on the soft end of dislike. This is on the soft end of disliking. I don't know why I said it like I, that either. I, I do. I did want to like the game, but the uh, you know like it's, the shots don't land. It Dang. just doesn't feel like. Oh, I hate that. It, well, it just doesn't Darn. feel. Darn. Like, you, you're making fun Diddly. of me. Anyway, those are my <laughs> my quick takes. I've not seen such bravery. Thanks for hanging around. We would love to hear from you. What are some games that you can't stand that uh, if you see it in the dollar bin or think you're getting a great deal? you might want to avoid yeah. tell us in the comments we would love to read about them and we would love to disagree or maybe someone can rescue a game from that yeah. sort of someone could defend it i'd love say, that how dare you yeah how dare you to talk bad about la noir yeah la noir was the game that i liked i had a baby in that movie i don't know why I said <laughs> subscribe don't subscribe you, you you're almost at a lot of subscribers you're not missing out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Metal G. Hmm? Metal G? Where? Where? My turn? Yep. Should I? Oh, I'm mad! <laughs> Let's cut that I, out. I don't worry. <laughs> Zoids. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yeah. But you don't see. Yeah. <laughs>